Welcome to the Quantum Collective. Hello, today I'm going to talk about disgorging in regards to making homebrew. So an important thing to know is why you would want to do this and traditionally how is something like this done. Disgorging is often done in champagne making because you end up with yeast in the bottle, but you would like a clear carbonated beverage. The way it's done with champagne is called method champenoise and if it's done with a sparkling wine outside of the champagne region but done in the same style of champagne it's often called method traditionnel. You'll start with a standard wine and then once the wine is aged you'll put it in bottles, prime it with sugar and an additional champagne yeast. Then you'll allow it to carbonate in the bottle it is allowed to age, age on the lease. This is called aging surly. It increases the mouthfeel, it can add bready flavors, and can overall balance a dry um, champagne. Non-vintage champagnes are aged on surly for a minimum of 15 months. Then you go through the process of riddling, which involves taking the bottle, turning it upside down, and allowing the yeast to settle in the neck of the bottle. Then you'll go through the process of disgorging, which I'll describe in more detail later, but the basic process is to remove the yeast from the bottle. And then you can dose with sugar and sulfites to make sure that you're not getting oxidation in your beverage. So a little bit about what I did. I wanted to make a blueberry blossom traditional using doing the most traditional recipe, which I'll link down in the description. Instead of a five gallon batch, I made a six gallon batch because I wanted to keep half of it normal and bottle as a dry traditional. And the other half I wanted to do this method with. So the second half I aged in bulk for six months in a carboy. Then I bottled with priming sugar up to six volumes and EC1118. I had 14 champagne style bottles and two 375 ml Belgian bottles. I kept one bottle still for my dosage because you lose a little bit of volume every time you disgorge. One year from bottling, I'm going to disgorge. That'll be this November. Then I'll cork with a champagne corker, Belgian beer corks, and wire cages. Now I wanted to have a practice run for this because I invested a lot of time and money in this mead and I wanted to make sure that what I came out with was going to be the best possible product without losing stuff to disgorging. So in order to practice my disgorging I made a cider. Uh, this is also another doing the most recipe uh, for a pet nat cider. Pet nat is where you bottle before your beverage goes dry so that it'll carbonate quickly in the bottle. Some more details on this can be found in doing the most video which I'll also link down below. I also added um, pectic enzyme and Opti White Booster Blanc and FT Blanc Soft just to improve the mouthfeel because this one is not going to be aging certainly I'm just doing it to test the disgorging method. So I bottled this one at 1.005 finishing gravity, which I checked on two hydrometers and a refractometer to make sure that it was exactly at 1.005. Then I stored the bottles upside down for two weeks. Now it doesn't really take two weeks for this recipe to carb because you're taking it in the middle of an already active fermentation. But I wanted to give it two weeks to give some time for stuff to drop clear. But after they had dropped pretty clear, I cold crashed so that they would be as clear as possible before I went to the disgorging process. Now I'm gonna describe what I actually did for the disgorging. So, the first thing you wanna do is freeze the neck of the bottle. 
That way your yeast is in one frozen puck that can be shot out of the bottles rather than liquid. In order to do this, you need a salted ice bath. And to learn from my mistake, I believe the best way to do this is to add salt to the crushed ice and then immediately put the ice back in the freezer for about 20 to 30 minutes. The salt lowers the freezing temperature of water, allowing you to get colder than 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero Celsius. After you have your ice salt mixture, you're gonna submerge the neck of the bottle until it freezes. Once it's frozen, but not too frozen, you want to move really quickly to go ahead and do the disgorging. You want to point the bottle away from you and remove the cap quickly with the bottle at about a 60 degree angle from the ground. If it starts to foam, then you want to cover it up with your thumb and gently release so that you're not losing very much liquid. After you've removed your yeast from your bottle, you can do your dosage. Now your dosage is where you're gonna add sweetness or anything else that you want to add before you recap or cork the bottle. A few notes on this process. You really don't wanna directly pour from bottle to bottle like you see me doing. You're gonna to wanna to use a syringe instead. This'll prevent a lot of the foaming issues that I had. I highly recommend adding a sulfite solution. Adding a sulfite solution will prevent some oxidation. What I did is I mixed up a solution that I knew would add 25 parts per million to each bottle every time I added one milliliter to the bottle. I will put the math on screen for how to mix up such a solution. This is the point you would want to add your back sweetening sugars to. But if you're going to do that, you need to also add potassium sorbate to prevent refermentation. And because you're not giving it any extra time for the sorbate and sulfite to work, I would also recommend keeping this in the fridge for at least a week so that the yeast don't wake back up. In addition to your sulfite solution, you're also going to want to add some of your original must in order to fill the bottle back up to the correct level. Then it's time to cap or cork. For corking, you're gonna need a champagne corker, Belgian corks, and a cage. Now, if you don't have all of that, it's easy to just go ahead and recap. You can also use a plastic stopper at this point and a cage. You're gonna to wanna to test the depth beforehand if you decide to go with natural corks. All right, some of my final thoughts on this project. It wasn't as difficult as I anticipated. I'm glad I spent the time to do this on a cider that uses store-bought juice because it's a lot cheaper than the mead that I'm gonna do this to later. But it really gave me the confidence to know that when I get to the mead later, I'm going to be able to do this without a whole bunch of issues. I would also definitely make sure that you put the salt mixture back in the freezer before you try to freeze the neck of the bottles. It's just going to take too long if you don't give it some extra time in the cold. You want to make sure when you remove the cap that it's fairly frozen all the way through your yeast cap. If it's still liquid at all, you're gonna have issues with it not all exiting the bottle. You could, if you wanted to, use a plastic stopper instead of a crown cap, but I recommend a crown cap because they're really easy to remove. The benefit of using a plastic stopper is the yeast would get trapped in the stopper as you go to remove it. Like I had mentioned earlier, I, rec I really recommend you use a syringe and a still beverage to top up. It's just gonna be a lot easier because you can put it into the bottle a lot more gently. My final tip is have a rag coated in sanitizer somewhere nearby. This can really help to clean off the residue from the neck of the bottle. Thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this and I really hope it helped you to know what to do if you wanna attempt something like this in the future. I'm gonna be doing a lot of champagne style traditionals in the near future because I really think it adds something 
to the whole process. Big thank you to Doing The Most for all of their content. I've included a couple of links to some of their videos in the description of this video. And if you want to, please like and subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.